Ever seen RV so popular? Uh, you couldn't even get it recorded? It's kind of what I'm running into right now. I might have to throw the deadbolt behind me, but you know, customers always come first to Bish's RV. Hello and welcome to, where am I at today? <laughs> Idaho, Josh the RV Nerd here with Vicious RV. Not even sure where I'm at half the time, although that actually is pretty on brand for me, I suppose. Here today with my first ever solitude. And I do have to ask uh, just a favor from you folks. It is really packed in between a couple other RVs today, and we are recording in a live display today. So I may not be able to get around it in full gory detail the way that I normally prefer to. Like, unfortunately, I won't get you a good look at the, like the nose cap, for instance. But if you can bear with me, I think we'll still kind of get the gist of things as we go through. One of the things I've really liked as I've learned more about Grand Design RVs is the consistency in the family up through the food chain, for lack of a better explanation. Um, you know, it all kind of sort of, the, the groundwork sort of laid with Imagine, then you layer on to Reflection, then you layer on again up to Solitude S-Class, and then finally to Full Solitude, you know? That's sort of what we're seeing here. I love the consistency between them, but I also like how each of their products has kind of a little micro focus for their own individual segments. They're really good at kind of narrowing and zeroing in on certain things. Uh, what you're looking at here has quickly become one of, and I have to check the stats, it's possible they've become the most popular luxury series fifth wheel out there. And from what I'm seeing and learning about them, I think for some good reason. Uh, you know, they have a, a solid insulation package, we got a good tank heater option, you know, the big refrigerators, all the stuff you expect to see out of a big luxury fifth wheel. King or queen bed options. And something else on this one I kind of noticed, they don't necessarily shoehorn and pigeonhole you into just a north-south bed slide. Now that sounds funny, but one of the reasons I like this is this layout, this concept and design is more CPAP friendly than a common bed slide in a lot of big fifth wheels, which usually doesn't have enough room around the bed. Now, as I go through this, I'll fully tell you, I am, I'm kind of looking, I'm still learning as I go. If I've missed something, if I get something wrong, point that out and let me know. But I, I think I've got a pretty good grasp of things here. And as the year rolls on, make sure you hit that subscribe button to catch all the other Solitude videos that we'll have coming out. We're starting today with one of their smaller S classes, but we're gonna go all the way up to the top for you. So make sure you hit subscribe and I think I got a shot. Let's get in there. So first impressions, you know, this is the first Solitude I've ever really had the opportunity to spend some serious time in. First impressions, sharp. I mean, there's, there's some good looks. There's some good eye appeal going in here. And I see a couple easy to miss kind of finer detail things that I really want to hone in on. Now there's a lot to cover. I'm going to kind of work my way from the top down. Um, I haven't had a chance to personally investigate this. What I have been advised by the Solitude representative uh, is their air system is uh, allegedly uh, produces like 63% more air down into the cabin as compared to like anybody else out there in this class. And it does so more quietly. Now, um, Keystone's recently really revamped their air system. I know Jayco's really big on their Whisper air ducted system. I've never seen a side-by-side -side decibel test Later this year, if I have the opportunity, I'm going to try to do some like trailer battles or battle of the brands, basically. And I'm going to put some of these claims head to head and I'm going to see how much validity there actually is to this. I'm willing to take them at face value, but it's kind of tricky when I have three people at three different factories all telling me that they're the only ones that do something. <laughs> this one here, this model gives us just awesome window coverage over on the door side. Um, and, and I mean, look, the window actually kind of creeps down behind like even the theater seat a little bit, but it, it just, the way that they have this wraparound window treatment up top, it makes it look and feel even bigger. There's so much purpose and intent. And actually, you know what that reminds me of? Have you ever been in the cab area of a big class A motorhome and they have those like wraparound curtains around the windshield cab area? That is sort of what this reminds me of a little bit. Now, one of the key details is that all of the Solitudes are wide body, uh, about 101 inches, something like that. But um, they they use a, a custom chassis for that, uh, for 100 reasons, for structural stability, for towing um, stability, you know. Uh, the, the frame rails are set wider apart. They're not using uh, like an eight foot chassis with just extended outriggers. They're actually using a chassis whose structure is made to be wider. Now, when the frame rails underneath the floor are set farther apart, that allows them to have some of the biggest holding tanks available in this class in the industry. 
That is one of the really, really nice things about these. Um, we will come back through like the kitchen in full detail. I'm kind of just doing a, a quick 360 here before we zero in on some more finer detail stuff. I love that big coffee bar over there though. And a little shoe garage by the door. Bunch of really nice little features. But let's get started, shall we? Now, historically, when I was with Halid RV, we didn't have access to Grand Designs. So a lot of people are, have actually specifically said, I really wonder what you're gonna say about those Grand Designs. So just so you know I'm being fair, because I've been very complimentary, I'm gonna point out right away, this to me is a silly miss. Thin shade ready with a full viewing window, but no actual privacy shade that costs like 40 to 50 bucks in a big luxury fifth wheel like this, to me, personally seems silly. Now that, if that's the only thing, you know, that's missing off this RV for you, call our team. We'll get a quote from one of our parts outfitters. We'll take care of you. Like that's just, it's not a deal breaker, but it's it's like, really? You went to all this work, like, look at this. They have, you know, uh, floor matching carpetless slides over here. Like that is a tricky thing to engineer. They have, you know, those cool window treatments. They have the full blackout roller shades with the drop knobs to pull off those things. I know that's not what they're called, but I like that name. <laughs> We've got that power theater recliner with the handy little USB chargers. And this is not a grand design thing. This is uh, something for the furniture supplier who probably doesn't watch my videos. Instead of the, uh, the, the charger plugs right there, put them on the face of the armrest. And in case you're wondering who wants them like that, the answer is literally every single person in the United States of A, okay? <laughs> Um, the wide body nature of this is really present uh, back here because being a little bit bigger, they can still give us decent side stands that have household and USB plugs while giving us a three-seater sofa that also happens to be a bigger hide-a-bed. And they are really smart about storage, but it's, it's easier, like sometimes in a smaller RV, you have to decide, are we going to give you big windows or storage? And because this is so large and it's long enough, like they can do both. Oh crap, that, uh, that is a TCL Roku smart TV. It does double pivot by the way. So if you want to be uh, back here lounging on the sofa, first of all, the default viewing angle is not terrible. But if you do want to pivot it toward you, it does have that ability. There's no storage behind it. Um, it's, it's, it would be shallow. It kind of feels like a little bit of a wasted opportunity, but Maybe there's something back there inside the slide of which I'm not aware. I, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, every little nook and cranny otherwise, they've done a good job of. It just feels like that one little spot. Now, whether you're in an S-Class or a full solitude, uh, you can get yourself a uh, nice convection microwave oven here. Um, and, a, and a handy little pro tip, grab your phone, put it in selfie mode, and, um, like, you can actually look back here. I'm trying to activate my phone in selfie mode on the fly. You can actually look back here and you can look at the cabinet styles so that you can see how those are made. Uh, let me see if I can get the angle. There we go. What you're seeing here is pocket screwed cabinetry. It is all wood quartz. An all wood cabinet, it does have a sticker wrap though. When you go up to full solitude as opposed to S-Class, you'll actually have a stained hardwood cabinet, which is kind of nice. Um, these countertops, they look really cool. They do have those sharp corners though. Now they're not like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna cut myself and bleed sharp. But like, it's pointy. It's pointy. If you run into it with your hip, you're gonna know. Ooh, good job on that toe kick. Now you see the heat vent down there. The whole thing with Grand Design, like they just, they don't do floor vents if they can absolutely avoid it. There's rarely times like in a bathroom or a bedroom upstairs where they will be forced to do something like that. Now over here, we have that extended countertop. You have a... Uh, a, a nice large chunk of storage below that. Not to mention below that larger oven where you can actually do some cooking, a big full extension drawer. And they did something here I'm actually surprised about. I kind of thought that that wasn't cool with the fire code is if you come over here, you notice this is a pleated shade. Usually you can't use that stuff that close to a fire source. Either they made a mistake or I've misunderstood something probably more likely I've misunderstood something. So in an S class, you have two refrigerator options. You have the, uh, some people call it a 12, some people call it a 13 cubic foot, whatever the case may be, gas electric two-way refrigerator. You also have uh, the option of going with a 16 cubic foot residential. Solitudes do not use 12 volt fridges. 
And, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That is a massive pantry. How can I show you how big this is? Hold on, I got an idea. Look at that. Look at that. That is, that's that, that's one of those cushions off that trifold. It's dwarfed inside this thing. And you wanna know why? Because if you look down here against the wall, you see that little sticker? That is telling us that there's a point in that wall that is prepped for a dryer vent. And then if you look over here, you see washer dryer hookups. What you can do with this, instead of you know occupying a huge chunk of your closet upstairs, they made the storage here extra deep so that you could put a combo or a side-by-side -side washer and dryer while still maintaining our awesome coffee bar, which by the way, the uh, power outlets for that and a ton of light switches are under the overhead and still maintaining good pantry and overhead cabinet space. So even if you add a washer dryer, it doesn't feel really like you've given up a lot of things. And this island, I'm just... This island is like a football field long, man. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> oh, this is brilliant. I don't, why has no one ever thought of this before? Okay, so these solid service countertop covers, get out of the way. Some people like a farm sink and some people like a split sink. Solid two goes, fine, you can have both. <laughs> this, uh, this island though, it's so large, even though the sink's dead in the middle of it, there's room for triple drawers with an extra large bottom drawer on both sides. And you see easy reach outlets. I love the undermount lighting. Ooh, 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 hold on. Nice wastebasket space. That is always on my list of things that I'm constantly looking for right there. Man, I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, what are the differences between an S-Class and a, uh, I don't know, full solitude, whatever you want to call it, is the stove. This has a little more traditional RV stove, although with... The fascia that they put on that bottom drawer, it does kind of look a little bit more residential. But in the full solitude, you get like that that larger, I think it's insignia, more residential style stovetop. Again, I'll have separate videos on those as soon as I can get my hands on them. You know what else I'm always griping about that a lot of big fifth wheels miss? A coat closet by the door. Obviously, somebody at Grand Design had their thinking cap on. Similarly, Look at where your control panel and like your converter fuse pox are located. Fuse pox? Ooh, that doesn't sound good. Fuse box. Um, if you have like a grandkid over for the day or something like that, they got curious little fingers. That's how they learn stuff. They just get their hands in all kinds of things where it doesn't belong. They can't get to your fuses. They can't get to your, your breakers. They can't get to your switches. When I was young, uh, I burned up the water heater element in my grandpa's camper uh, when they were dry camping, I didn't know any different. I just walked by and the light was down here, down low. And I flicked the switch on and it turned red. Ooh, neat, right? It did a thing. I came back later and turned it off. Then when Grandpa came home, I go, hey, Grandpa, look what I found. You flip this on, turns red. He goes, don't do that. I'm like, well, I did it earlier and nothing happened. He goes, oh. A few minutes later, he walks around the corner with a burned uh, heater element in his hands. He's like, yep, he toasted it. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> All right, so leaving our living room behind, stepping upstairs here, there, over there, by the way, I don't know if you noticed it, that's that uh, little uh, control panel. So if you don't want to use the physical switches, you want to like Bluetooth your way to everything, you can do that. This is called the Moonwalker maneuver that I'm doing right now, going backwards through this thing. And I'm doing it blind, mind you, because I'm watching the viewfinder of the camera. That was not too bad if I say so myself. Um, this bathroom is huge. This bathroom is huge huge and i've seen a bathroom like it before in a north point years ago but um i, I don't know that that was executed quite I, I think i like this one a little better anyway um personal preference let's start with shower head room holy crap shower head room it's huge in there uh not to mention you got that sh uh, height adjustable shower hardware and uh over here you have the uh the nice big cabinet space here now, another thing that I kind of feel is like a little, mm, I don't know, not my personal preference, um, is the, the bathroom fan, but I guess I'm pointing down right now. So let me show you the toilet space, which is monstrously large. But let me get you back up here. Good linen space, which is nice, but this is outfitted with the smaller fan on a big fifth wheel like this. Kind of like the lacking of the thin shade in the door. It just, 
I just kind of feel like it should be one of them Big Max Air style fans. But once again, that's such an easy thing for us to accomplish for you here at Bishes. Now, if you're not going hee hee and doing the moonwalk, you come over here. This is one of the interesting things about this floor plan. It is a bathroom, bedroom, kinda super slide in the upper deck. So that whole closet, the sink, the vanity, that's all actually in the slide out, which is kind of cool, and remains accessible in transit when the slide is closed. And if you hang with me a little bit, I'll show you the road mode, like let's just see what you can get to downstairs. But just as a result, huge counter space over here. And I don't normally open a lot of storage live on camera, but I'm right here. I mean, it's so much bigger than if it was just, you know, against the wall. It creates a huge chunk of extra storage space as a result. Now, flip it over here in the bedroom. This is one of the very few uh, solitudes that uh, doesn't have an east-west bed slide. But what that means is you do have a nice large, at least on this side, like CPAP side stand. Now, you might look at this and say, ooh, it's a little bit tight over there. It certainly can be. We are looking at one today outfitted with a king bed. Um, you can also get these with a queen. So if you want more room to walk around it, you can. But here's another cool thing. If you look at this, the bed base is mostly centered. So if you want to go to a queen bed, we just need to trim out the base for you a little bit and you can get your way in there. And look how they just utilize every inch of that nose cap. Like the bed is sucked up into the nose cap. And that is one of the secrets of a solitude. Um, basically they can give you more floor plan space inside the RV without giving you extra exterior length and towing length. It's a really crafty thing they do that I don't know everyone's necessarily in tune with. Now you do have a roll down blackout privacy shade for that. I love that accent light up there. I don't like dark spots in RVs personally. Um, now naturally, since it's not an east west bed, you don't have that whole front closet, but you do have a big double hanging closet over here. And remember, you always have it because you don't have to uh, worry about washer dryer space since that's all occupied downstairs. You don't you don't lose uh, any of that effectively. Um, that side stand over there is a nice big storage trunk. It's just kind of blocked off and in the way. And then above the bed, you know, above the bed, it is symmetrical. Um, let's talk about their, uh, let's finish up the bed. There's so much I want to talk about in here. Holy cow. Uh, anyway. Um, we were looking at storage, might as well look under the bed, right? And once again, same thing. They just use all the space they can. And look how it's totally carpetless. It's just so clean. Even under the bed, the execution is very, very clean. Now, before I forget, if I turn around, one of the cool things here is your uh, evening entertainment is totally handled. And now, now I want to talk about these air conditioners real quick. And I want to really focus in on this because this is a big deal in what they do here. So... There's air conditioners. These are 15,000 B2 Coleman Mach ACs, which are quieter uh, than just a, I don't know, than some other air conditioners. Anyway, um, the uh, that's something you can check off websites. You can check their decibel readings. That's not an opinion. That's not marketing. That's just a statistical thing you can verify. Now, there's also power saver and soft start airs. Those are two different things. These are both. So, Soft start means it's there's a capacitor basically it uses it needs less juice for the startup kick because if this is the power that this air conditioner needs there's a big startup spike and then it tapers down real quick. Um, a soft start tapers up a little bit but not too much. Keep that in mind. Now there's also power saver. Once it is running it keeps that running voltage down even lower. So this is both. What this means is that this RV can run two 15,000 BTU air conditioners on a 30 amp circuit. That's hard to find. That's hard to find without aftermarket upgrades. And they're doing that from the factory here. So, uh, you know, if you had say about a 4,000 generator, you should be able to run most of the time, both air conditioners on this. Um, you know, these are available with onboard generators that'll absolutely run everything. But with the not power consuming air conditioners that they have in this thing. You don't necessarily need a giant. If you want to have a smaller portable that you move around, you could do that here. So if you look at one of these that doesn't have an onboard generator already, there's other ways around it versus spending around eight and a half thousand dollars to onboard an Onan that isn't already there. Like if there's no gen prep, like on this RV that we're seeing, 
to have it fully gen outfitted, it's a chunk of change. Whereas a portable option that is now available to you can be thousands, half the price or, or less, you know, it's this is one of those things you don't see it, but it's money that is, uh, is part of the solitude family. And, uh, for some people, it could be the make or the break, you know, let's check out the road mode. Bedroom and bathroom are basically no brainers but they did uh, a good job down here. They made it as accessible as I think it reasonably could be. By the way, I forgot to talk about this in the kitchen. This is also a carpetless floor flush slide. It blends in so well, I missed it. But as you see, you can still get yourself down here to the fridge. So if you need to make you know, an overnight sleepover, if you need to grab a quick bite to eat, use the bathroom, all of those functions are available to you in transit. And if you appreciate the way we give you that information and close them all up for you, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now, there's a lot of people outside that want to get in this RV and I need to get it open real, real fast. So pardon me, I'm going to split. All right, so once again, I really do apologize that we are all kind of wedged in here. I can't give you a good look, especially killing me on this one because it has that awesome looking windshield and nose cap and everything. But look at the shape of that. You know, they use like every inch of that they possibly can afford. This is another really cool grand design thing where they have their nose caps. Um, not only are they running a radiant barrier down the nose, but they're also running an extra layer of batten insulation. It's like a double insulated nose cap effectively um, so that you know you don't have that big like air gap causing the issues. Double power running on here, really maximizing our patio space. And I like how they use the shorter arm on the upper awning. So first of all, it fits on the gooseneck area, but secondly, it uh, you know doesn't uh, hit you in the head if you walk under it like I'm doing right now. Um, the uh, There's some folks behind me here who are just kind enough to wait for me. I I really do appreciate that consideration. Thank you, folks. It is not easy recording a bunch around a bunch of people, like especially when I'm not at all used to it. Now, up front, what we're looking at here. So these are, um, they're all solar prepped. There are solar packages available. You can get a, it's a 50 amp MPPT charge controller and a, uh, I believe 165 watt uh, Furion panel that the, that charge controller means here, huge expansion. But up front here, what we're looking at here is the bare base front compartment on this. It's just wide open storage, which is cool. But every single solitude, S-Class or full solitude as it were, they are all uh, capable of being gen prepped or outfitted with a generator from the factory. So if you're really looking for that completely untethered lifestyle, especially on a smaller model like this, smaller being relative, smaller to the solitude family as it were, it gives you the ability to get unhooked, unplugged, and camp your way where you want to, you know? Now again, I try to be fair, um, unless I've missed something. Like I like that we have outside TV hookups here, but unless you leave the door open, I don't really see a way to feed those cables out here. It's not a major problem, it's just a little thing. And it's a rare, surprising miss from what I've seen. Their logic and application on things is usually very fine detailed, but this is killer. I love how they put the battery disconnect up way up high so that shifting cargo ain't gonna smash it, you know what I mean? Um, these are what I call the David Blaine uh, zero gravity steps. Normally, I would stick those out, sticking straight out in the air with nothing below them. But with folks coming and going in the RV, I didn't want to do that right now. Now, the entry door is anti-slam, so you can miss Piggy. Hiya! That thing. Kirby. <laughs> um, by the way, if you didn't know, uh, Frank Oz voiced both Miss Piggy and Yoda. So think about that. Think about how similarly they sound. A lot of people are like, no way, that's not true. Then you Google it, you're like, dude, that is true. Oh my gosh. Anyway, um, so it's anti-slam, but it still has the, oh, she, someone's grabbing the door. I was reaching for it myself. <laughs> We're doing it live, folks. Anyway, it still has that handy magnet hole back. And you saw the little sprayer port back there. That's stuff that like um, Eagle from Jayco is uh, really good at. Also similar to Jayco is the way that they fully laminate uh, their slide end walls. So like you see little targets like thump here. And sometimes people get a little upset when I hammer fist that thing. Folks, look at my lady fingers and look at my chicken arms. If I could hurt that RV, by punching it, uh, it's maybe not an RV that's worth buying. That is not a problem that you have here. Now, one of the differences between the S-Class that we're looking at and the, I guess we'll call it full solitude, is that these standard have uh, framed out airflow windows. Now, every single window is fully aluminum framed out though. So underneath the wall, it's all studded out, which is nice. 
Uh, one of the things they did here, I love this because um, like I, I've recorded a lot of reflections lately and they do a lot of things I like. But one of the things they do that I don't like is they put the speakers up way up high. These right here, these right down next to your chesticles so you ain't blowing away the neighbors, you know. Swinging our way around the back side here. Again, we are all wedged in on this one. It's in like the worst possible position for me, but we're going to make it work. And I appreciate your patience and tolerance and understanding. Um, just in case you forgot what brand you own, they put it right on the back side for you. <laughs> but the 3,000 pound towing hitch with safety chain hooks and four way wiring harness. So that if, especially on one of their shorter models, if you want to add a little trailer behind this, you got the perfect little spot to do it. Now, if you notice, our uh, tail lights also have a little reverse travel element which is those things are shockingly bright it ain't quite as bright as a welder's arc but frankly i don't think it's that far off of it um and those are extremely handy if you do choose to uh utilize the backup camera prep and add like some kind of observation system of some level here and again i get it there's like a hundred posters and balloons and everything in the way i am sorry what i want to talk about here though is something you can't see anyway and that is Titan Seal. So this is um, underneath all the seal points or at the, all the corner structure points on RVs, uh, there's material used called butyl tape. And it's, there's nothing wrong with it necessarily, but butyl tape is a uh, petroleum-based product that dries out and rots out organically, naturally, over time. It just That's just its lifespan. It, it does that. Um, Grand Design doesn't use that because they don't want it to fail. They want this to stay in your driveway longer, you know, more peace of mind. So what they do here is they use a mylar tape around all structural corners. So basically the entire exterior perimeter of this thing, including the slide boxes, has a secondary seal under the skin. So you still want to maintain your exterior seals, certainly, but it gives you a second layer of defense. That is just it's it's a nice handy thing now if something happens to tear your roof membrane yeah you could still have water in there it's not impossible it's just it's more protection more you know better than less obviously <laughs> um <laughs> our docking center here uh enclosed in the uh you know pass through cavity where it's heated protected underneath uh we have the um I mentioned earlier the radiant barrier. We have forced air uh, heating. We also have the uh, the holding tank heaters down here. And one of the other things I want to kind of showcase, again, it's not something you can obviously see, are the tires on this thing. They are using H-rated tires. Um, so here's the thing. I'm not personally aware of a documented case of a tire blowout with an H-rated tire, just with a tire pure failure. Now, debris could still certainly pierce it and cause problems, but I'm not aware of an H-rated tire failure. That could also be because not a lot of people use H-rated tires. That is pretty beefy. By the way, um, depending on the floor plan, uh, some of these S-Classes might be a four-point leveling, and that's going to be one of the other differences between an S-Class and a, uh, a big solitude, or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so a couple key details, an S-Class versus the full solitude, which I don't have one to point at right now. We will get more of those through the year. But since these are new to this channel, I want to kind of give a quick primer. I probably should have done this sooner. S-Class is going to be... so. S-Class Solitude. It will be very similar to High Country and Full Montana. A, a very similar parallel, a great analogy. They're, you know, two separate brands. They each do their own things. But S-Class, uh, like we'll have electric slides. We have uh, electric leveling. Um, we have the, uh, the, the framed out windows versus frameless. There is an option, by the way, on the S-Class for dual pane frameless windows. Um, there's uh it's a couple little details like that like the refrigerator is uh, uh 12 cubic foot standard on this so you can get that 16 cube residential in a full solitude you get a uh 18 cubic foot whether it's gas electric or residential they don't do 12 volt fridges in uh solitudes currently it's interesting to me they do that in reflections but not solitudes i highly predict that will change in time i don't have confirmation of that I'm, i ain't got a crystal ball i just kind of i've identified some trends that happen through the industry um, so there's, you know, a couple key details like that, whereas a full solitude, uh, it'll be hydraulic, uh, leveling hydraulic slides on the main, uh, level, you know, the frameless windows, all the core construction is the same. It's just elevated to an extra degree. How you doing fellas? I tell you, a lot of people have asked that I'm going on a tangent here, but a lot of people wondered, eh, 
you know, I bet you're going to be going after six months to get bishes now that you're not at Haywood RV, Josh. All the haters out there, I'm pretty sure I'm here to stay. This has been an awesome experience. I've been welcomed with open arms at every facility I've visited. And the culture of this organization from the top down is so warm and welcoming and classy. I, I don't predict myself be, not being here, for, I don't know, maybe ever, long time. I don't know. This is great. This is a These are quality people. This is a great place to work, definitely a great place to do business with. I wouldn't be here if I didn't think that. So, for all the folks who know more about these than I do, um, I'm working on it, but how would I do? How's my report card? And again, um, when I have a chance to get around one of these, like at one of our uh, dealership locations versus like an event like this, in case you're wondering why I'm here, and like, why would you record this if it's so boxed in, there's so many people around? Because it's currently four degrees outside and about two feet of snow, and inside here, it's 70 and sunny. And that sounded good to me. <laughs> So as always, uh, let me know your feedback. What do you think about this one? What do you think about the bedroom, the, the different refrigerator things? Like, how would you build out one of these? I'd love to know. Um, as always, best wishes from Bishes. So you take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.